Hello everybody. I am so sorry for the difficulties. I had to stop and restart the video. It kept cutting me off and restarting. So I hope I didn't lose too many of you. If it is your first time watching, my name is Evelyn Knight. I'm the owner of Child Care Business Professionals. Again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. I hope this recording turns out okay. And I hope those of you who are trying to watch me can hop back on. I don't know what is going on with my connection, but let's hope this will make it better. Mira is here to say hello today. She is um, joining me today, of course, and I tried to put her in a room, but she knows how to use doorknobs. So it's kind of hard to get her to lock up. So I hope everybody took care of themselves this weekend and did something to help us get through this week. The weekends are the times for us to recharge our batteries, reset, and just take charge so that, so that we can take charge of the week. It is, um, last week was pretty rough, I'm sure, for all of us. It was a rough week, just reassuring people, having to be the cheerleader. So the weekend is a great time for us just to kind of regenerate, right? So I really, really hope that you were able to recharge. And um, let me know in the comments what you did this weekend. Even if you're watching the replay, just let me know if you recharged and you're ready to slay this week. So. This week, as you guys saw, I well, hopefully you saw, I did put up a calendar for the week and it will just go over the different topics I will be going uh, over this week. I did have a chance this weekend to get a little bit more organized. Last week was a little chaotic for me. I'm, I am a plan person. I need a plan. I need, you know, just outlines and whatnot. So doing the improv thing every day was hard for me. So this week I should be much more together and with it. Um, so today we are going to talk about finances and just some stuff that you can do right now to try and help your center through this time. Now I'm not going to go too much into it on Thursday. My financial advisor, Christine Mailer, is going to actually be on live with me. I'm so excited. I talked to her on Saturday and told her just what I've been hearing from you guys the messages I've been receiving and just the pain points. So she agreed um, to come on and just give you guys some tips and tricks. And when it comes to personal finance, she is so much better, or not personal, but business finance, she's going to give you so much better information. But I just wanted to get you guys started today on some basics because when it comes to our finances, we do not have time to wait. One day can make or break us right now, right? So everything you can put into motion today can really, really help you to make sure that you're taking control and saving where you can. So I'm just going to give you some uh, basics on what the first kind of things I started to do. And I think Christine can dive a little bit deeper. Um, and I'm hoping Christina, I don't know if you're on here, but Christina Richmond might also be with us on Thursday. I'm not sure. I haven't got confirmation. She is Christine's partner, so it's amazing if we get both of them. Uh, so that would be awesome, wouldn't it? So today, I'm just going to go over a quick overview and uh, about what we need to do right now. And right now is the time for us to get lean, right? We really have to start getting lean. And this just, it, it, I just kind of feel like I'm back in 2008. And in, in 2008, where in, I first started in business, um, you know, things were booming and then suddenly the recession hit. And um, then in, gosh, it was 2009 or 2010, I was, uh, I, in 2008, I was an in-home provider. I had my uh, a center in a rental house I owned. So we had quite a few kids, but it was, it, it was small. It was just a little rental house that we turned into a childcare center but we started building um, and so in my first built center that I built from the ground up, that project started in 2008. We were supposed to open in 2010 and that's when the flood hit my city. So I kind of feel like I'm going through this all over again. I've been there, done that, and here we go again. Um, and, but thank God now, I, I just know so much more than I did then. And it just kind of, I, this weekend I just kept thinking about, I'm, I just feel so blessed because um, back then when I went through this, it was so different. And now I can bring my experience to you. Since I've been through something like this before, this isn't the first time my business has gone through a disaster like this. And I'm sure some of you have experienced the same thing. 
but um, is it different because all of us are going through it at once? Yeah, it's it's just very heavy, very big for us right now. So, oh, and by the way, you guys, I was interviewed for the Hi Mama uh, podcast. So uh, the uh, gosh, what is it? the preschool podcast is what it's called. But Hi Mama is the company that owns it, and it's the preschool podcast. So that should be coming out this week. Pretty excited about just uh, give, bringing you guys just more value and information. So back to 2010. Um, there's a few things that I didn't do back then. I didn't know I should do that I'm definitely doing now. And when I look back on it, I can tell you guys that, hi, Ronnie. Um, I can tell you, and Ronnie was there with me, uh, I, that we made so many mistakes and we wasted so much money that did not need to be wasted. And I'm just determined this time, I am not gonna do that. And you know, retrospect, again, last week I talked about retrospect. And when we look back, we have all the facts, right? And it's, um, so I've always promised myself I'm not gonna beat myself up anymore over retrospect because the me of the past did not have the facts, the me of the future does have all the facts. So it's something I'm really working towards. But I can learn from my history. I can learn from the mistakes I've made and I can make sure that my business comes out of this much better off. Thank you, Tabitha, how are you doing? You know, I, I it was kind of funny, Tabitha. Tabitha says I look beautiful. I do, it's Monday, right, by Friday. One of my friends actually messaged me last week and, um, and she's been watching all these videos and she's uh, in Arizona and she asked me, how are you doing? Um, on Monday, you looked really good, but by Thursday, not so much. <laughs> yes. Uh, Monday, I'll look okay. By Thursday, not so much. We'll see. So anyway, um, the mistakes I've made, I can learn from them, right? It's really important, you guys. We are going to make mistakes like this right now. But just tell yourself, I'm not going to beat myself up over it, right? The mistakes of our past, we're not going to beat ourselves up over it, but we can learn and grow. And that's what I'm doing now with my 2010 experience. And I hope I can bring some of that to you. So right now is the time for us to get lean in our businesses, right? We really need to focus on getting lean. And a couple things you can do on that is we really need to manage our cash flow right now and make sure we're doing everything in our power to manage and take control of that cash flow. Every dime you spend, you guys, from today on, you have to really just pay attention to it and there can't be any waste. And I mean, even little things like your Starbucks coffee, right? If your business is buying you Starbucks coffee, uh, those are the kind of things that it's amazing how much they add up. And um, I did, uh, Christine, my financial advisor had me do this uh, thing that I'll have you guys do also. It was just kind of an exercise that you go through and you pick apart your P&Ls and your bank statement and you find little things like that. And I couldn't believe the hundreds of dollars that just goes when you're not really budgeting and watching every dime that you spend. So just really, really watch every single thing that you're buying right now, just from the business, really watch it right now. So that's cash flow management. You're just really gonna have to, and you know, cash flow management is a huge subject. I cannot go into it in a Facebook Live, but I'll give you what I can. Uh, the other thing is your discretionary spending, and that goes along with cash flow management. What I suggest uh, that you do, and this is something that my husband taught me, and it's using the 3N method, and it's something I use in everything. Um, and so you guys, I know a lot of you guys are going to, first thing you're going to think when I tell you this is you don't have the time. And I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have the time not to do this, Okay you your business is going to this could make or break you so make the time i do have a course that i sell on time management if you need to take that right now it's a good investment i'll link it uh, in the uh, comments i'll put it in there it will help you learn how to take care of your time you guys through this i am coming online with you guys every single day i'm still running my center i've been there every day I, uh, you know i normally don't want to work full time but I have been just to make sure that my center feels secure and knows I'm there for them. And if I can find the time, I promise you guys, you can find the time. This is vital. Get in your office, shut the door, go home, 
you know, what you need to do, even if it's in bed at night, this is vital. But you need to do something that my husband calls the 3N process. And I want you to take your bank account statement first, and then you're gonna do this with your P&L. Or, you know what, actually do it with your P&L first. It'll be quicker and easier and more satisfying to do it with your P&L first. Take your P&L and go through, make a list. You're gonna take a piece of paper and make three columns. And you're gonna put necessity, needs, and nice, okay? And you're going to take everything on that P&L and under the necessities, you're gonna write down what is a necessity, like your rent, your mortgage. Those are absolute necessities. We cannot avoid it, right? Needs, and you guys, I am going to say that payroll, parts of payroll can be put in needs because I know as much as we don't wanna hear it, we can lay people off. And I know right now, um, I know, check your local state. Uh, I know the feds are working on something for a national um, uh, unemployment, but just remember right now that we are trying to keep our centers open. And this is about survivability. And you owe it to your staff and the families in your care and your personal family to do everything it takes to keep your doors open. So as difficult as layoffs are, it's one of those hard things that we as leaders have to do. We have to do it, you guys. Otherwise, our staff will not have jobs to come back to. And I know it's, it is so hard. Last week I was exhausted because I did have to lay off a couple of my girls and it is just um, emotionally, it's awful. But I reassured them that they have a job to come back to. And that's how I know, like taking these quick actions is how I know they will have a job to come back to. So payroll can be a need. And some, you know, you gotta slim it down, figure out exactly what you need. And for my um, members, I do have forms that I will be sharing with you guys. And we're gonna go through um, an exercise on how I figure out down to the, the 30 minute mark exactly how many people I need on payroll. And then we create a schedule that around that just to make sure that we are optimizing every last minute of um, payroll time. And when I started this method, this is actually something that I created myself. And um, I was able to save over 100 hours a week on my payroll when I created this method. So just, uh, so for my members, if you're a member, that's something we will be going through tomorrow evening. Uh, just helping you guys out, figure out how you can cut down on your payroll and your expenses. But the necessity needs a nice, just go through anything that's on the nice list, it's gotta go. It has to go right now. So the necessities, nothing you can do about it. We need power, we need you know running water, we need our rent. The needs are things that maybe you could get away with at least trimming down. Maybe you could get away with, uh, you gotta have them, but you can tweak them a little bit, right? So like if you have a cell phone plan that your company pays for and it's got a lot of extras you don't need, cut the extras for now. Okay, you still got the cell phone bill, but you're cutting all the extras. The nice are things that can absolutely go. Things that are nice to have, but you don't, they're not necessity items, okay? On the necessity items, I would really caution you though, like when I was doing this for my business, I do, I told you guys I have that lawyer insurance thing. Um, I kind of toyed with, is that a necessity need or nice? And I did decide that that is a necessity right now, just because I need, we need to make sure that we're protecting ourselves. So anything that is really contributing to your company's protection and bottom line, that needs to say, and it's only, um, it's not that expensive anyway. It's only a hundred dollars a month. So a hundred dollars a month for my peace of mind and, uh, making sure my company is protected is definitely worth. So. Some of these can be hard to decide on, but just really ask yourself, does my company really need this to function? Um, and the next thing I'm gonna have you do is the same exercise, but I want you to go through your bank statement. I want you to take last month's bank statement, the last 30 days, and anything that's recurring, take, put it on the list. Um, what I did to make this a little bit easier was I just took three different colored um, highlighters and my necessities were in like, I don't know, for example, they would have been like orange, my needs were in blue, and my nice were in green, something like that. But I highlight them in different colors. It'll make it a little bit easier to get through this on the bank statement, especially if you have a large center like me, your bank statements could be huge. But go through and cut, just do the cuts. Go on um, 
I know like for me, I have a ton of things on auto ship on Amazon. Well, I don't need as many paper towels right now as I did, you know, last month since my um, enrollment is half of what it was right now, right? Well, my attendance is half. So I need to cut that auto shipment. I don't need as much or I need to change it. And right now I'm actually just cutting all of them and I'm just manually ordering everything. So do the same thing and then work on calling all those, you know, things that you have that are, are a need and get rid of it right now. Just for now, it is temporary. So that is my assignment to you. And I'm telling you that it could, you guys will not believe how much this is uh, one of the exercises I did that helped me um, all together with, it's just one component. But when I first hired Christine, she helped me shave off 17% of my overhead expenses and I'll tell you she actually assigned told me we were going to cut by 10 percent and I told her that wasn't possible I thought I was running so lean that I never thought that would be a possibility but after working with her for um I don't know I don't think it even took us more than two months she actually helped me figure out how to cut 17 percent of my expenses so it's there you guys i think just this exercise alone helped me find that 10 percent and um and i'm and 10 percent is a lot of money for my center 10 percent is like five thousand dollars a month for my center so uh, you know and then with just the deep dive work she did with me she was able to find an additional seven percent so it's really important to get that done right now because we need to, our businesses to survive so uh, look at the subscription services right now that you guys have. Maybe there's uh, some of them are willing to go to uh, what, you know, skip a month. Uh, the other thing that you could do, I know a lot of mortgage programs are doing interest only payments right now. So if you have any mortgages, um, I would uh, make a list of all your creditors right now, everything, your credit cards, your mortgage, any, auto payments you're making, any of the bills that you have, make a list and call them. And now that you're going to have your P&L, you'll have all of those. Make a list and call them and try to negotiate lower bills. This is something I've done with my phone bill and it actually works. So uh, they actually do negotiate that rate. It, it's crazy, right? I, and there's a lot of times what it is, is there are other programs you could be in that you didn't even know existed that can help you lower your bills. So, but you won't know until you call them. A lot of credit card companies and whatnot are either deferring payments or they are um, letting you just do interest only payments. So that could save you quite a bit of money right there. And so make sure you do that. And then I am gonna put a summary together of the things I've listed and so that you guys have like a checklist in writing. But uh, do you guys have any ideas or questions on other things that you could cut through? So the big thing though is that necessity needs in the nice list. When you do that, you're gonna see your creditors, right? You're gonna see the stuff that you can't get rid of. Like we wanna preserve our credit. So we want to make sure that we, um, sorry, she's distracting you guys. We wanna make sure that we keep our credit good, right? But we need to do what we need to do to just try and get those bills lowered. So a lot of the credit card companies too are either letting you defer payment or um, letting you just lower that minimums. And also some of you might just like pay your credit cards off in full every month, you know, like, you know, for points, a lot of us just use our credit cards and then pay it off for the points, right? Or you might be making more than minimum payments. Now might be the month that we need to just go to making minimum payments. So just go through any of the auto pays you have and just adjust them just to make sure that you are, uh, you know, just doing what you need to do to preserve your cash flow. Right now, what you need to focus on is preserving your cash flow. Uh, the other else thing I wanted to bring up is the SBA loan that's out there. So the SBA loan uh, is up and ready. If you go, uh, I will put the link in the comments. Um, I did actually go through the process last week. Uh, to make to just in case I need it, but it is actually fairly easy. If you've ever been through the SBA process before, you'll know that it is not fun. It is not easy, but this one isn't nearly as bad. It's it, I'm not going to say it's um, it's not totally easy either. It's not like just filling out a credit card application, but it's not nearly as bad as the normal SBA process. So with this SBA process, 
all they're really asking for is a personal financial statement, your business's financial statement, and some tax records. They're not even asking for P&Ls or bank statements, nothing like that. It's very, very basic. So just go ahead and start that process. I will put the information for you up on that. And uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Tomorrow, I'm going to be, tomorrow I will be focusing, um, I have some really good stuff tomorrow. I'm actually thinking that the productivity is going to be extremely useful. Uh, when I was looking over my notes on what I'll be talking about tomorrow, I almost wanted to do tomorrow's instead of today's. So you guys, my, my numbers are fluctuating big time, so I don't know if my connection is bad. Again, thank God the replay always comes out okay, but I had like 15 people on here, then it dropped to zero. Now I'm seeing it go back up again, so it's just kind of weird. So I'm sorry if that's the case, but usually the replays aren't like this. Um, so yeah, tomorrow's productivity, I'm gonna go over just stuff that you can be doing right now to ensure your business's success when you get back, and you can make it even stronger. So by the time that you're back and you're open again, we can actually come back to stronger, thriving businesses that are healthier than they were you know, uh, we are going to have some finances to come right to struggle with. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. It's going to be rough when we come back financially, but the business side of things, the management side of things can be better. You can come back to a stronger uh, program than what you left. If we take this time now to really strengthen it, we have a great opportunity right now to really strengthen our programs, our relationships, and the kind of things that build a successful business. So that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, are the things that you need to do to build that strong, sustainable business. Oh, um, just a teaser for tomorrow, because I'm really excited. Uh, one of the things, I've been getting so many messages from you guys on parents that don't wanna pay you uh, through this time, right? And that's not something we're really struggling with. My parents are not really arguing. And I, so this weekend I have just kind of thought of like, why? Again, why am I not? And and I, I know why, I pretty much figured that one out. So that's what I'm gonna go over with you guys tomorrow is why is it that my families are not giving us a hard time about having to pay? And of course there's gonna be that percentage, right? I'm not gonna say they're all not, there is. I, I do, I would say about, to, uh, I don't know, not even 10%, maybe like anywhere from maybe 3% are being resistant. They don't want to pay. But for the most part, my families are being fantastic about it. So I'll go over why that is. And there are things you can start doing right now to get yourself into that position. You can really start working on that right now. And now is definitely the time to do it. Now is the time to get that um, loyal base going. So I'm going to sign off today. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to send them over to me on Friday. I'm doing a question and answer. Send me your questions in the meantime so that I have them ready for Friday. And um, if you guys want a message or just put them in the comments, whatever, I do read through the comments. It's nice because the others can go through and read the questions also. And if you have any questions for me that you'd like me to address on Fridays, go ahead and send me a message. So I hope everybody has a great week and they're ready. We will make it through this week, and I know um, we'll end up on top. Have a great week, everybody.